We're moving more and more of our, of our life, of our software, of our um, processing of data and of our sociality into a cloud um, that's dominated by a few companies and fewer and fewer companies um, as the days progress. Um, we're really moving from a model of the web that was very open, distributed, inter-networked um, to one that's really becoming a collection of online services that are barely connected to one another. Uh, these identity silos or walled gardens that people talk about. Um, you know, if you really think about it, Facebook 2009 is a lot like AOL 1992. Um, and, and, and once you start making these analogies, you can really just go a little bit crazy here. Uh, you know, Google's BitNet, MySpace's Prodigy, Microsoft is, of course, still Microsoft. Um, I think that uh, probably the, the most hazardous part of this is that not only is, is much of what we used to do on the web going into these kind of online services or um, walled gardens, but you know, a lot of what we used to do with desktop and server software is going into these systems too. And I think that's a, a bit of a dangerous trend. I mean, I think it's an important and there's economies of scale and things really work out very nicely that way. But uh, I think in general, when we're concentrating this much into a few companies, I think it's bad for the web, it's bad for business, and it's bad for our society. Um, I'm not the only person who, ha who says this. Uh, Tim O'Reilly's uh, had a lot to say about this on uh, O'Reilly Radar. IBM's coming out with their open cloud manifesto, how important it is to have an open cloud. The Economist uh, had an article about um, this very issue in, uh, uh, a couple weeks ago, right after their really good uh, open source article. Um, so, you know, what, what is there to do about this? I'm part of a work group that's called Autonomous, autonomo.us. I love this domain name, but I, I'm the one who picked it. Um, when we're working on uh, this problem of, of how, do we, uh, how do we break up these big systems into smaller, more distributed systems, and uh, different people are working on this in different ways. Uh, we have some legal people who are working on it from a licensing aspect for um, open source software. There are some people who are kind of on an advocacy side. Um, me, I, uh, oh, uh, we, we started this thing, uh, the Franklin, Franklin Street Statement, which I think is very interesting. If you're interested in this stuff, you should really check it out. Um, basically, what we say is that, uh, you know, the best way to have an open cloud is to use open source software, uh, depend on open data, and use open standards for um, open software services. Um, I feel like my contribution, uh, I, I like to start websites, as I said, I started Wiki Travel, so my contribution has really been, you know, starting more websites, and uh, that's what I do. Um, so when we originally came up with this uh, autonomous group, uh, I, I was like, well, what should I really concentrate on? And, uh, and, and this came up, and this was what I was looking at every morning. Oh, man, I hate it when that happens. Just go away. Um, you know, what are you doing? What's on your mind? What are you working on? What are you working on now? Um, the, it, we're seeing these all over the place, and it's clear that these little status box things are coming up, and, and status really matters uh, on the web today. It's, it's become one of the hot buzzwords, this real-time web, uh, status web. Um, Microblogging is this other thing that people talk about, mostly bloggers. Um, and uh, you know, what, it, what it's made up of is these kind of short notices that are distributed over your social network and uh, go out over multiple channels, IM, uh, SMS, uh, to desktop and mobile clients. It's a simple system, and, uh, and it's got this nice mix of uh, synchronicity and asynchronicity. You can get things immediately, but you can also kind of go back and sift and search as, uh, through, uh, through archives. It's also got this interesting mobile and PC aspect, this great unification. I think that's one of the things that makes it really important. I, I think one of the main things that makes it really important is that Twitter grew 900% in the last year. Uh, they've got more than 30 million users, and uh, we read about it every single day in the newspaper. This is really you know, what's getting people focused on this whole status web idea. So it matters, and it's something that needs to be uh, addressed, and so that's really where I went in to take my, uh, take my uh, 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 stand on uh, uh, open cloud services. Um, and there's just so many different ways that you can uh, do a microblogging site. You can have a general purpose site. You can use it inside the enterprise for community groups, for vertical groups around a uh, particular interest. 
um, also for broadcasting uh, stuff publicly, either for big brands or for media or for government. Um, I think that there are so many things that we can do there, um, but since this is the web, I really think that if you have lots of these microblogging sites, they need to be connected, and that's not something we see currently. Um, Twitter, uh, FriendFeed, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, you don't really share status between these systems. It's all shared within the systems. Um, and I think that's bad. I think monolithic systems suck. Um, I think that these walled gardens suck. Um, uh, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so I think that there's some work to do um, in sharing these uh, status systems. And, and that's what I'm trying to do. Um, what we have right now is this kind of one big Twitter model, you know, one big system and everything's all in there. Um, and you know, if you're allowed to get into that data, you say, thank you, sir. Um, I think that this needs to be kind of changed um, and it's actually gradually developing uh, that way to be more like uh, what we see in blogging or other kind of web systems where there are publishers and subscribers that use different kinds of uh, uh, software either to receive uh, status updates or to share status updates. Um, and uh, I think that that's a, a worthy goal. Uh, my feeling is that, um, you know, any kind of distributed communications media that we've seen be successful has really required a, a good simple protocol that works, and one of them, and a good open source server. Um, for example, email uh, with SMTP and uh, SendMail. Uh, the web with HTTP and Apache. Uh, blogging with, you know, all those things, and, and WordPress. Um, you know, counterexample being instant messaging. Uh, there are two public protocols, Simple and XMPP, um, one really good server, um, and so that's always been a problem. And, and we still haven't seen a unification around instant messaging. It's mostly come down to, uh, you know, multi-protocol clients. Um, whoops. Uh, similarly, social networks have, have no protocol. Um, some good servers, I really love Elg, for example. This is, this is a problem. Um, so with that like, set of evidence, uh, clearly I'm correct. Um, so if you know, it's going to be important to have a uh, distributed microblogging system uh, that can be shared around the web, um, it's going to need uh, some good open source microblogging software. Um, the requirements for this software is that we'd really look to have you know, kind of WordPress scale um, deployability. So this is thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of installations that we'd like to get to. Um, it needs to be installable anywhere, especially installable on commodity hosting systems. Um, and it's going to have to, you know, kind of uh, keep up with the pace of development in this important area. So it's going to need a big, fast-moving development community, all of that, which points to um, PHP with MySQL as a, as a backend, uh, at least. Um, the uh, you know kind of other requirements for the software, um, it needs to be themable. You know, just like WordPress, you really want to give people their own personalities to their microblogging sites. Extensible, um, so that you can have some experimentation. Um, programmable, and that's you know uh, with a web API that uh, third-party developers can can work with. Um, it also needs to be scalable, and that's one of the things that's uh, really a challenge with uh, microblogging is that you're you know, sharing a few messages that fan out very quickly to hundreds or thousands of people um, and people are really looking for a real-time experience that's you know, less than 10 seconds after publication or less than 30 seconds after publication when you actually receive the message. Um, I think that scale is something that's very interesting. Uh, you know, when people talk about scale, they're always talking about way over on this side, um, numbers, number of users. Um, I think that uh, there's, when you talk about scales, software needs to scale all the way up and down the scale. So you need to support very small sites with just a few users up to millions or tens of millions of, uh, of people. And uh, ideally our software wouldn't change dramatically as it goes from one side to the other side of the scale. Or it would change incrementally as we move from uh, uh, installation on, on commodity web hosting to large installations with lots of own servers. So, uh, you know, looking at this problem and addressing it, um, I uh, came up with a solution, um, not immediately, of course, but, uh, and the, the solution that I came up with is called Laconica. That's the uh, software that I wrote and released uh, 
last year, about this time. Um, again, the clever uh, domain name. Um, I, I, I'm an American, I live in Canada, so when I started being able to um, uh, get .ca domains, I, uh, I really went a little bit crazy, and Laconica is one of them. Um, so Laconica is a web application, it's written in PHP, uses MySQL or optionally PostgreSQL as backend. Uh, we could probably port to other systems, but these are the two that are most important for open source developers. Um, the software is very similar to other kinds of microblogging software. Uh, that you'd be familiar with. One of the things that we've done very, that's very interesting is that we clone the Twitter REST API. Um, this is Twitter's API for uh, mobile and desktop clients. Um, this has been great for us because it got uh, lots of the Twitter third-party dev community on, on board with our system. So uh, if you've used Twirl, um, Posty, Spaz, Twitterific, um, Nambu, uh, all, the, all, all this software um, also supports uh, Laconica, which has been great. Um, these are some of the leading uh, Twitter clients. Um, we've, uh, for scaling, uh, we, we start off at a very simple uh, model um, it, uh, on that low end of the scale. As we move up, we use uh, the Stomp uh, protocol for offline processing. So um, things don't actually happen at web time. They, they, they're handled by uh, offline queuing demons. Um, we support uh, Jabber for IM. So this is one of our input and output systems. Um, and we use email gateways for SMS. So that means that if you, um, SMS is a really costly area to get into if you want to get into mobile um, and sending or receiving uh, text messages. Um, just to get into the space is pretty expensive and then to actually be there is really expensive. So we cheaped out and we use email gateways for sending and receiving SMS. We do have uh, some plugins that can use real SMS for some systems. Um, we have a, uh, a really nice, well, I think it's nice because I like writing code for it, uh, hooks-based um, plugin architecture. That means that we have events that happen in the code, and if you want to write a plugin, you can write a, uh, uh, um, handle a hook um, and uh, handle an event, and you can either um, process it yourself or in inspect it or, um, or bounce it, not let it happen. Uh, this is a lot like the way that MediaWiki um, it does its plugins, and that's not a coincidence because I wrote the uh, plugin architecture for MediaWiki too. Um, ah, I had already said this. Um, and then finally, for the, uh, you know, as I was saying, we need one open source uh, server and one good um, protocol, um, good enough protocol. And the good enough protocol is called open microblogging. And this was de developed specifically for Laconica, but we've got, uh, we've had, uh, we're up to four implementations now, um, and uh, I think we're going to get a fifth pretty soon. Um, it's an HTTP-based protocol um, that allows a user on one server to subscribe to notices from a user on, on, on another server. So our fundamental um, element of the system is, to, uh, is, is the subscription model. Um, we use OAuth for authorization, so OAuth being the kind of hip new way for people to authorize systems to access services. So, you know, and then we model the subscription idea is really authorizing a remote service server to push notices into your inbox. And uh, once we kind of break that down, it becomes much easier and our uh, subscription system is, is, is fairly simple, especially for people who've ever used an OAuth uh, server before. Um, our current version is version 0.1 for this open microblogging. Uh, and uh, it's, it just pushes uh, plain text profile data. Our version 02, which is going to be coming out um, soon, in, in air quotes, um, uses uh, atom entries instead, which is much more extensible, and we can get richer data into them. And uh, we use vCards, uh, so we can get very rich profile data. Um, in the open microblogging model, identities are URLs, so my identity is Identica. Uh, slash Evan. Um, we don't define a uh, syntax for the text that's in um, notices. Uh, my idea was that we're going to have a lot of cross software uh, chitter chat, so we don't force a syntax, and we really think that that's kind of a, a content level rather than a transport level. Um, but we are working with the microsyntax.org, um, who are working to develop a um, standard for microblogging syntax. So we're participating in that process. 
Um, the, uh, the thing that everybody asks me uh, when I talk about this distributed microblogging is, you know, how do you do at replies? Um, that's the first question always. So I'm going to go over that really quickly. Um, if, if people just give a nickname like this, these at replies, you know, at nickname, uh, we do a guess. And it's usually a pretty good guess. Uh, we look for someone in your social network or someone who's on the same server that you're on. Um, if users um, give more specific uh, information in the at reply, like uh, this email style or in an URL style, we'll um, distribute it over the open microblogging network instead. Um, since this is kind of wordy and since you're limited in your, um, the space that you can put into a notice, we actually allow um, uh, aliases on the domain or um, you can divide uh, service defined, server defined aliases or user defined aliases. So if I know that someone's, uh, I've got John1 and John2 and they're on two different servers. So this all kind of works the same way that your email uh, uh, contact list works. Um, good. Um, some other nice things about our software, Laconica. Um, we use OpenID for authentication. We don't actually integrate OpenID into the uh, open microblogging process, so it's, a, uh, it's purely for authentication and logging into our service, but, uh, but we do support it, and I think that we're going to, in later versions, kind of integrate um, your open microblogging identity and an open ID identity. Um, we support uh, bridging to, to and from Twitter. Um, we use, uh, you know, for those people who already have a Twitter identity and uh, are well used to Twitter, we want to support those people so we can post notices into Twitter and then in our upcoming version, um, you can actually read your uh, friends' um, notices from Twitter. So you can use it more like a, you can use our software kind of like a microblogging console um, and logging into networks that you already use. Um, we're, we're supporting uh, Facebook um, also. We're supporting Facebook for um, authentication, logging in. We support posting to um, Facebook from our software and uh, we're trying to figure out a way to actually pull data out of Facebook so you can do that same kind of thing. Uh, Facebook's terms of service are a little more strict than Twitter so we don't feel that uh, we can do that very easily, but we're looking for ways to do it. Um, we've incorporated lots of what people expect out of microblogging into our software. Um, we use hashtags, and we actually stream hashtags. We give RSS feeds for hashtags. Um, and uh, we also uh, use our replies in the, uh, in the web software, which is something that's not always done. Um, we're, uh, we're big fans of open data. I'm a big fan of open data. So our software can push data out to public downstream users in a lot of different ways. We use uh, ping to push stuff out to blogging uh, uh, aggregators. We use XMPP, which is the um, uh, uh, protocol behind Jabber, um, but it's also great for sharing data. So we push data out using XMPP, and we also use this uh, SUP soup um, protocol, which is the friend feed protocol. So it gives a very nice uh, kind of real-time uh, process, too. Um, speaking about uh, data, our default install, so when you, when you install our software out of the box, it's set up so that data is uh, licensed um, using Creative Commons uh, Attribution 3.0 license, uh, so that's the default license. And uh, most of the um, downstream users of the software seem to leave this in place. It seems to be the license that people kind of assume makes the most sense for uh, microblogging. Um, but uh, and I think that's been a really good uh, uh, process. Um, and uh, we also support a lot of things that uh, open source uh, software, uh, that uh, other microblogging services don't necessarily support. We have a concept of groups, which is like mailing lists. Uh, we uh, are just about to re release file sharing or multimedia sharing, so you can share images, photos, video, uh, audio, you know, poor man's uh, video casting or, or poor man's podcasting. Um, we're, uh, our next version is going to have uh, conversation tracking, which means that we'll keep kind of a tree of, uh, of notices rather than uh, just a stream of notices. Um, we've got theming, which is uh, really fun on a user level, and uh, we're also going to be doing some uh, using Comet to, you know, ajax update pages uh, on the fly. Um, 
So the, uh, this pro project launched last year, July 2nd, and uh, you know, a uh, good question is, you know, how, how's that going? Um, and it's been a long, weird year, but uh, it's, it, it's working out pretty well. Uh, the code uh, base right now has uh, 50 contributors, um, which has been, you know, this is unique contributors, um, which is great. Um, we've also had our plugin system is picking up some steam, and we've got dozens of plugins running. Um, on our self reported list of public sites, we have 200 sites listed, um, and that doesn't really cover the internal private sites that are happening in the, uh, in the enterprise. Uh, we have a lot of companies that are using our software inside the enterprise for enterprise microblogging. Uh, Sun, SAP, Motorola, um, Mars Inc., the candy bar people. I think that's pretty cool. Um, my goal is to really see uh, a lot more growth, and I'd like to get kind of on the scale that, that WordPress has, and we're really kind of tracking WordPress as far as you know, trying to do the, the right thing uh, for massive popularity. Um, I'd love to have, five years after launch, uh, one million sites using our software on the public web, connected through open microblogging, uh, able to uh, subscribe back and forth. Um, and this has become my full-time job um, for me. I started a company called Control Yourself Inc. Um, I've got seven people working for me, and uh, we're, our, our, our business is really around uh, providing services for the software, so installation, maintenance, uh, support contracts, service contracts, as well as customization, writing plugins or writing themes. Um, we also have a, uh, uh, we're going to be launching a uh, uh, software as a service offering, so you can set up a microblogging service um, on our servers um, for a low monthly fee. Um, this is going into private beta this week, and if you're at all interested, please talk to me. Um, we're especially interested in supporting open source uh, projects who want to uh, have either public or private um, status sharing. Um, and then our, our, our system for this status.net is that you'd sign up and you'd either get you know, your name.status.net or you can assign your own domain to it. Um, we're making money. Um, we've got venture funding, which is kind of cool. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's about me and my company. Um, the software, I think, is um, you know, pretty, pretty useful in so many ways. Um, I think enterprises are kind of our big uh, target audience. Um, they seem to be very interested, and they're probably going to be the engine of, uh, of you know, uh, growth and innovation for the software. I think that there's also, as I was talking before, uh, a usage as a uh, kind of a microblogging console. So if you're a big uh, brand or a celebrity like Oprah, um, say, let's say you're Oprah, um, and you've just joined Twitter, you're driving millions of people into Twitter. Um, without actually picking up a lot of value out for you as, as, as your brand. Um, so our idea is that you can actually set up your own microblogging server. Um, you can broadcast out to Twitter and Facebook and et cetera, but let that drive traffic back to your own site. Um, and I think that there are a lot of uh, media producers, um, celebrities, um, government or public sites that can't really, that need to have control or um, auditing of, of the status they're sharing. So I think there's a lot of people who could use it like that. And I think finally, the, the most important one to me is communities, you know, the, the long tail of the web, the millions and millions of sites out there that are, you know, forums or um, bulletin boards or uh, uh, wikis or blogs that could be um, better supported with some uh, status services or microblogging uh, in, in the way that we do it. So, you know, they're, they're going to have tight knit um, interrelations within the community and then being able to integrate into the rest of the web too. Um, and I think that this is really something that's going to be a really big challenge for um, everybody who's working on the web right now, everyone who's working on the open source. You know, what are we going to do to uh, make, this, uh, <coughs> make this process um, uh, continuous and successful? And uh, I hope everyone who's here has some time to, to think about that further. Um, these are my millions of URLs. This is how you could get a hold of me. Identica is my, uh, our public service. Um, Laconico is the software. Stats.net is the uh, software as a service offering. Open microblogging is the uh, protocol. And Control Yourself is my company. These last two are me personally. And uh, feel free to contact me at either one of those. 
So I, uh, I left a lot of time at the end for questions um, because uh, usually there's lots of questions about, uh, about, the, uh, about the software and about the, the process and about the uh, network architecture. So, uh, so yeah, how are we doing with questions? Yes, sir, up front. Uh -huh. If you go over uh, your implementation of, and, and explain for like a lone headed person like sure. yourself, uh, the use of Mexican CPUs for uh, local access to the money or what you require there. Yeah, yeah. So the, the question is how we use uh, XMPP, um, both for mobile and, and, and desktop. We support both of them. Um, the, way that we, uh, the way that we do it, there are a number of ways that we could have done it. Um, the way that we felt that, that worked the best for us and that had been kind of uh, modeled with other microblogging services and with other online services was to have a single um, uh, Jabber user, uh, ours is updated Identica, that uh, sends and receives notices for the entire system. So we uh, broadcast out um, HTML enhanced Jabber messages to users, and uh, they can respond to that single user, and, it, and the uh, the responses will get posted to our website as well as shared out um, through multiple channels to the rest of the users who are in their social network. Um, so the uh, the system is a little bit complicated. I think that we have some streamlining that still needs to be done um, on the usability, but basically you sign up. On the website, you put in your um, Jabber ID. We send you a confirmation code. You have to respond to that confirmation code, very similar to how email signup works. Um, and then once that connection is set up, you can use the website to, uh, uh, to set your uh, preferences, what kind of messages you want to receive, what kind of messages you don't want to receive. And uh, you can also do some control of the system through commands that go through the Jabber interface. Um, so you, know, you can say, you can ask for the last update from a particular person, or ask for their bio or um, location. Um, you can mark something as a favorite or unfavorite it. Um, and this is all through the XMPP interface. So it's a really nice, of the uh, interfaces that we have, I think it's probably the most efficient. It's uh, the most real time. Um, uh, there are some. Uh, developing standards in the XMPP area um, for social networking, for status sharing, and I think that uh, we're going to be uh, continuing to track those. I think they're pretty cool. Um, probably one of the ones that's uh, most interesting right now that everyone's kind of hip to is the new Google, Google Wave protocol, um, and we're going to see what we can do to support that too, um, pushing data in and out of Google Wave. So, uh, yeah, good question. Yeah. You stomp. Stomp? Oh, Stomp. Stomp is, a, uh, Stomp is an interface for queue servers. So this is where you can you know, push a work item into a queue, and then a number of queue servers can you know, be listening to that queue, and you know, the work item gets routed out to those, those uh, different uh, uh, queue servers. Stomp is, a, is not a piece of software, it's not an implementation, it's a protocol uh, for doing queuing. So uh, there are a few different implementations. The one that we use internally is called RabbitMQ, um, and it's a pretty nice system. It's written in Erlang. I think it's pretty cool. Um, there's another major one called uh, ActiveMQ um, that supports Stomp. That's from Apache. It's the Java one. So um, it's, a, it's a nice system, too. The, the whole point is that when, you, uh, when I post a um, notice to Identica, uh, that needs to go out to uh, about 3,000 people. When Aston Kushner uh, posts a notice to tw Twitter, that needs to go out to a million people. And it's got, it needs to go out to those million people in 30 seconds or less, hopefully, right? So we really need it. We can't do this at web time. Um, can't send it out at web time because then, you know, Aston Kushner's, like, web page would take forever to reload. Um, so we, we, we store it, we push it into a queue server, and then these offline servers deal with fanning that out to the, the people who, who need it, sending it out over IM, SMS, um, out to the web. So it's a nice system. 
um, and I really encourage it for anyone who's doing uh, web development to be looking into Q servers for uh, uh, for performance. You know, finding out what do you really need to update right now at web time. So we'll update um, the author's uh, inbox so they see their own messages and they get that feeling like yes, it was actually posted without necessarily. Um, it, it, not actually getting out to the rest of the world uh, until, uh, uh, until a few seconds later. Let me do one more over here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'd like to know what other kinds of non microblogging uses you're finding. And for instance, I'm using Laconica to push environmental conditions out to people at Colorado, like That's awesome. Hold on. Is it, yeah, okay, so the question is, uh, what other uses of Laconica are we seeing besides just microblogging? And I think that this is a really interesting uh, uh, point. I, I think that, you know, and I've started calling it status sharing or status uh, distribution rather than microblogging because I think that that microblogging idea is a little bit limiting. And uh, what he's doing, what's your name? John. What, what John's doing is uh, sharing out environmental information with people. Um, and I think that that's a really cool one. I think that's, that's actually really great. Um, some of the things that I've seen, people um, in school districts, so they sign parents up to, for status uh, updates, and so you know, uh, parents get information on the um, classes that their students are in, you know, what's the school lunch today, is it a snow day? I guess in Portland that's not as big a deal as it is in Montreal where I'm from. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Um, so the, uh, but, uh, you know, so that's one that I think is really neat. Um, another one I thought that was really cool was a company that's uh, put a Laconica server in like all their data servers and all their, um, excuse me, all their data centers, worldwide data centers, and they've got like, you know, thousands of machines that update data straight to the status servers, and then sysadmins who are interested in, you know, a particular application that might be distributed worldwide or a particular kind of server, I won't, I, I admin the, you know, web servers, their database servers can subscribe to the servers, or servers they want and, and get updates as they come through. Um, I think that probably my, um, my hope is that we're going to see more and more of that kind of uh, uh, status as a service, you know, uh, using status in this kind of ubiquitous way that you don't really think about a web interface or a, 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 a a, uh, a particular kind of uh, interface, but you really just get this, this data coming at you when you need it, where you are. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that's, that's really cool. Can you uh, send me uh, a little bit more information? Or let's talk after. <laughs> cool, you had a, another question. Yeah. What are the parts that are stable? What, what are the parts that are less stable? Um, probably, you know, one of the ones that you were talking about, uh, we were talking about is the queue servers. That's probably something that's, um, that's becoming more, um, more important for us as we're moving to a, um, uh, a, a service provider um, uh, kind of format. We want to be able to do that efficiently for, you know, hundreds, thousands of uh, supported services. So really the, the queuing and the offline queuing is something that's kind of hot for us right now. Um, probably the biggest thing that we're doing right now is uh, starting file sharing. So you can post um, images, audio, video, you know, that's typically the public web kind of thing that people do. Um, internally for enterprises, you'll be posting Word documents and, you know, spreadsheets and stuff like that. And, um, but, uh, you know, the fun stuff is images and audio and video. Um, and uh, we're taking that kind of slowly. We want to see what the, uh, what the um, culture grows up around that and, and make, the, uh, make the software respond to the culture rather than vice versa. Um, so we're really not looking to be like an image shack or a YouTube, but uh, we'd like to have this, this feature uh, augment status sharing rather than replace it. So, um, but that's something that's, uh, that's actually pretty big right now. Probably the biggest thing um, that I'm looking at after we get out of this, uh, uh, this next um, uh, release, uh, we've got our 0.8 release tomorrow, um, and we'll be uh, moving on to 0.9. Probably the biggest thing that we're going to be looking at is uh, location. So, um, 
you know, this kind of uh, real-time web meets location web, and uh, how do we interface with GPS systems? How do we store location? How do we share location? How do you search on location? Um, I'm here in this room right now. What notices have been posted in this room, you know, in the last 24 hours, in the last 48 hours, ever? Um, I'm on this corner. Who's posted something about food or bars, you know, uh, nearby? Um, and I think that that, that kind of uh, a combination of location and search is going to be really exciting and, and really interesting stuff. Um, so, w you know, but for us, probably the most important thing is um, storing data in an efficient way that's um, easy to change back and forth from, um, you know, lat long elevation, uh, kind of putting you in, in three dimensions on the sphere of the world, um, but also using, uh, going back and forth from that and to uh, human meaningful location. So I, I'm not just at this particular lat long, but I'm also in the Fremont room of the Oregon uh, Convention Center um, in Portland, Oregon. And uh, those are two different ways of looking at this place. We'd like to support both. Yeah. So, yeah, I think filtering is going to be really important with this. Um, it's, uh, it's funny, you know, there are people, probably one of the biggest things that happens with Twitter, and I think one of the things that's, that's you know, causing kind of a collapse of the social network on Twitter, the social fabric on Twitter, is this idea that you subscribe to, like, thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. You know, you subscribe to everyone who subscribes to you, and, and, and you know, the most important thing to do on Twitter is, is to get, you know, 10,000 followers or 100,000 followers. Um, and, and that seems way less interesting to me than, than actually being in, in contact with the people that mean something to me, uh, that are meaningful to me. Um, so I think that, that filtering becomes more of a problem when you're in that kind of space than if you're in the you know, uh, 150 people that are, that are in my group kind of idea. However, um, even if you have that 150 p people, there's still going to be someone who's you know, gone to a gardening convention this weekend and is live blogging it, you know, every five minutes, and I just don't want to hear about it, right? Um, we have a couple of, we don't have uh, features for that now, but I think it's something that we're going to see pl develop in our plugin space, and I think it's something that we probably will develop into core um, two at some point. Um, ideas that come up are the mute button, where I just say, you know, I'm just not, I, he's, he's my friend, I eventually want to hear from him, but I'm turning him off for right now. Or turning him off for an hour, or turning him off uh, for the next you know, day or two. Um, another idea is basing and filtering. So just say, hey, you know, I, I don't like this, I like this. Um, and, and let the system kind of learn uh, what's meaningful, what terms are meaningful, what do I really care about, what don't I care about. Um, and then lastly is um, using your social networks preferences to guide your own preference. So, um, you know, uh, if, I, I, if I follow Don and Don has said, you know, I, I like this notice, this makes sense to me, um, you know, if he had something as a favorite, that's more likely to show up in my uh, inbox than something that's, that's not a favorite for me. So, um, I think that's going to be a, a continued problem. Um, and uh, I think that I'm really looking forward to some experimentation, both on our side and core, and in what people can do with plugins. And I think that we're giving people the, the ability to do with that with plugins right now. Yeah. Okay, so the right. <laughs> oh yeah, so the, uh, sorry about that, yeah, I shouldn't laugh at the joke if I'm not actually uh, 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 sharing it out with everyone. Uh, the question is, uh, you know, if we're going into file sharing, what are we doing to, uh, to, to deal with, uh, you know, how, how do we keep it from becoming kind of this rat's nest of uh, copyright violations and porn and, um, you know, things that, uh, things that are bad? Um, 
Yeah, unless you want to do that. Well, you know, my first answer is like, um, for 99%, 99.99% uh, .9 of the sites that run our software, that's not my problem, right? It's not my uh, site. So if you want to share whatever you want to share on your own site, that's your problem and that's your life, right? And there's, a, there's an entire, you know, kind of legal structure around that that I'm not really that worried about. Um, and clearly, like, our software is not principally about, um, you know, copyright violations or that kind of thing. Um, we filter pretty strongly um, the files that are being uploaded uh, based on MIME type, on size. Um, we're originally just going to start out with images. Uh, we ask that um, you assert um, copyright and you offer the uh, content under um, uh, the same Creative Commons license that, uh, that our software is under. And if we can, you know, see that the, that it, that it, the uh, files that you're sharing are not yours and not under that uh, license, uh, we reserve the right to take it down. Um, so that's the basic idea. Um, we're going to be monitoring that initially through our, our admins are going to do that. Um, eventually we're going to be crowdsourcing that and uh, having a this is spam or this is, um, this is a copyright violation or this is inappropriate material button on each notice. So that's kind of, uh, and, and that's probably going to be coming sooner rather than later because I think, it's, I, I agree, it'll probably be a problem. Um, but uh, mostly I think that the uh, uh, publishing on the internet is something that a lot of software lets you do and uh, we're not um, uh, so much different from, you know, WordPress or Drupal or anything else that lets you publish stuff on the internet. And I, I feel like um, it's not really that, that big of a challenge to do that. And I think we're just doing it in a particular way that makes it easy to share stuff with your friends. Yeah, Don? So, there's a slide about like, giving away free assets slides. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. So the, 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 the question is, um, of these kind of systems for doing uh, distributed at replies, you know, which one is becoming the most popular? Uh, how's the implementation? We've got it in, uh, this is working in um, dev implementation, but this is not yet rolled out to Identica, and uh, we haven't finalized it for the open microblogging 0.2 version. Um, the nice thing that we've got is that uh, Jaiku, uh, Google's microblogging platform, uh, is going to support open microblogging um, 0.2, which is going to be really great, which means that you can enter a uh, network between Laconica sites and Jaiku sites um, and jaiku.com. Uh, great stuff, but it just means that we've got a little bit of a, a, a standards effort to make those two systems sync up. It is. It is. I think that um, I think that's really one of the challenges we've got with open microblogging is taking that um, because our identities are URLs um, and uh, open IDs are URLs, right? And, and the, the the question was, you know, are, are these don't these look a lot like open IDs? And yes, they do. And I think that uh, we need to be bringing that together. I think that um, there are some ways that we could do that. I don't want to make it only an open ID because I think that limits the uh, what we can do, but I think that you know we could make every op op open microblogging uh, identity either an open ID or delegate to an, op uh, an open ID of your choice. Um, and I don't think that that's that hard to do, but it's something that we need to eventually reach. Um, important, important question for us. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the design of the, uh, it, it was kind of, uh, it, it happened in parallel, you know? So I had the, uh, uh, oh, the question was, uh, um, and let me see if I can restate this. It went, as I was designing the protocol and the software, um, you know, which came first, the protocol or the software? And uh, actually it was, it was in parallel, you know, so I'd be like working on the code a little bit and they'd be like, oh, that's not gonna work. So I'd go back and work on the protocol and, you know, change the, uh, change the requirements and, you know, kind of go back and forth. And uh, eventually, that's what came out. I tried to, uh, I, I tried not to tie the uh, the protocol too much to the implementation. Uh, left a lot of things open, 
in the protocol that necessar weren't necessarily supported in the implementation and tried to look forward a little bit. Um, there, it's a very simple protocol and there's been some criticism about that from, from some people, you know, this is clearly a very simple protocol, but I actually think that like 0.1 protocols are like the only protocols that ever get, um, you know, any traction. They're the ones that actually get picked up and used. You know, if you start off with a, uh, a protocol that has, you know, a binder of like 700 pages, you know, and so every single thing's been defined, no one ever bothers implementing it and it never gets done. So open microblogging is a super simple, um, uh, piece of uh, piece of uh, uh, specification, and I think that uh, the fact that we're seeing you know more implementations means that it's going to be more likely to uh, to succeed. Yeah. Yeah. Sh sure. Um, the question is, how does Google's uh, how does it compare with Google's Open Social Protocol? Um, open Social is a really interesting uh, system. I, I think it's pretty cool. Um, the, but the big point of Open Social is to let you build, you know, something like a Facebook application and put it into a whole bunch of different uh, 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 social networks. So you can build a Facebook application. You can build an Open Social application and deploy it on Orkut or uh, Ning or LinkedIn or MySpace. You know, very cool system. Uh, what is not built into that system is any kind of federation between those social networks, right? So if I'm on MySpace and you're on uh, LinkedIn, there's nothing really in open social that lets me share information with you or you share information back with me. Uh, we can't really define link as, links to each other. It's just, it's not that they don't want it. Well, I'm sure some of them don't want to do that. but. Uh, it, it's that, uh, you know, it's just not in spec for open social. However, open social does have a very cool um, activity streams or status uh, mechanism, and uh, we're, we're, you know, working to tap into that. I'd really like to get us uh, having an open social application, and uh, I think that we have a potential to be a, you know, kind of an activity streams or status provider, so, you know, kind of just support that part of open social from our side, too. So yeah, I, I think open social is really interesting, but the big thing it's missing that, that we do is connections between, uh, across organizations. Um, I think I'm over time right now, so uh, if, if there's anything else, uh, please come up and uh, talk to me. Otherwise, thank you very much.